So you want to learn how to find your own art style. Is the prospect of this daunting and a little intimidating to you? Well, you're not alone because I think that a common misconception that many people have is that an artist's style is somehow magically bestowed on you and that it's some sort of passive thing that just comes to you like some sort of divine calling. Well, I'm here to tell you why that isn't the case and more importantly, what you can do to actively find your own style and voice. And hopefully by the end of this video, you should have a good game plan to help guide you to your own unique style. Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I am a professional artist with over 17 years of experience running my own art-based business. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that comes up over and over again. And that's how in the world do you find your own art style? As someone who's developed a distinct style of my own over the years, I feel like I can give you some honest insight on how I was able to figure it out. This may sound shocking to some, but I think that pure artistic talent is kind of overrated and it's more about your choices and the intentions you set that will determine how unique you are and how much you'll stand out from the rest and ultimately how successful you are at carving out a name for yourself. So now that we know that finding your art style is not necessarily something associated with talent or something that happens organically, how do you actually figure out and what are the steps that you can take to fast track finding a style of your own? To help you, I have three tips. Tip number one, my first tip to figure out your own art style is to observe and analyze, AKA do some research. Have you ever seen a piece by someone else and gone, oh, wow, I really wish I had done that. And I don't mean just appreciating someone else's art for appreciation's sake, but felt like, you know, you really wish that you had done it instead. So here's our first exercise. Create a Pinterest board or an old fashioned pin board, whatever works best for you, and collect eight to 10 pieces from other artists that really speak to you and are styles that you actually wanna move in the direction of. Keep it small and really narrow it down. They can be literally anything under the sun from museum paintings to artwork you've seen from another artist on Instagram, but they all have to be things that really resonate with you and something that you aspire to do yourself because there is a difference. I mean, I can appreciate the art of some artists without actually wanting my art to evoke a similar feeling or emotion. So I kind of compare it to appreciating someone else's outfit or dressing style. There are other people out there whose personal style, you know, I admire and I like, but I wouldn't want to dress like them myself. And then there are people whom I wish I could just wear their entire closet. Whose clothes do you want to wear? What art do you wish were actually yours? Once you've made your selections, have a little analysis session and try to figure out what it is about those pieces that appeals to you. Is it the use of color? Is it the subject matter? The more you can break down the individual characteristics of that inspiration that you're drawn to, the better your understanding of your natural preferences and tendencies will be. I know I'm really drawn to artists who are really bold with their use of colors, and I don't typically gravitate towards photorealism, but I love pieces that are more decorative and that tell a story. The colors can also be a big driving force. What we're trying to do here is to establish a correlation between these different pieces. What do they have in common? We're essentially connecting the dots. So now that you know what you actually like, you could try incorporating some of those aspects in your own work. And I'm not saying to copy anything, but you know, you can bring some of the flavor from this mood board into your own work. How would you approach it? Are there things that you would do differently? Try creating a piece that could fit into this little visual world that you just created. Doing this soul searching and even maybe journaling it will help move you in the right direction. Tip number two, now that we know your likes and preferences from this mood board exercise, next step is to uncover your natural tendencies. So what does that mean? Well, every person has things that they do that are, a lack of better words, weird. And that weirdness is where things get interesting. When I was starting out painting my ballerinas, I used to get really nervous painting the human figure. 
Very often my figures would look noodly and have really odd proportions. And where most people would say, well, you know, practice and make it more proportional and more realistic. I actually leaned into the weird tendencies of mine. I started stretching out their limbs even more. And with time, I made those oddball features of mine even more exaggerated as my figure started veering from an attempt at realism to a world of fantasy. Um, because like I said at the beginning of this video, art isn't about being perfect or necessarily representing your subject matter with exactitude. It's about making stylistic choices that tell a story, that delight, that leave the person somewhat changed after viewing it. So are you struggling with perspective when drawing your architecture and it's looking like a weird, wonky funhouse? What would actually happen if you leaned into that? That's actually what Picasso did in his painting Guernica. Or maybe you like painting nautical scenes, but you can't quite get your washes and your ocean to look realistic. What are the tendencies that you do that you can exaggerate? This is sort of the definition of turning lemons into lemonade, but I think that there's definitely something to be said for exploring your own mannerisms and seeing if you can turn them into a positive and even a signature of your style, because I can guarantee you that those strange and oddball things that you do are pretty unique to you and only you. Tip number three. Understand that style is not a static end goal. It's constantly evolving and changing. So as you experience more things in your life and grow as a human being, so will your art and your style. So the style that you're practicing right now may be different from what you end up painting in five years time. I know mine is. Maybe your style will change drastically. Maybe it won't. But I think that most artists experience an evolution in style as their skills grow, as their workflow changes, and as they experience different things and different seasons of life. Going back to the analogy of how you dress and pick out clothes, what you wore in high school versus what you wear in college and as a young or older adult will certainly change, which is part of growing up and maturing. Life experiences change who you are as a person, and that can change your perspective on lots of things. After my son was born, I remember seeing the world through his eyes for the first time, and that really influenced me in many, many ways. My art got more playful, more colorful, and I was inspired by the fresh perspective that that whole experience gave me. So every now and then, do another little check-in and you know revisit the exercises in tip one and two because I think that those are a great way to circle back and revisit things. Aside from being fun to do, they're a great grounding exercise and a way of reflecting on where you are at this moment, where you've been, and, um, and where you're going next. So now I wanna hear from you. Do you have an art style? What is it and what were the steps that you took to develop it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me and I'll see you next time.